StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of Mid Rank Madness. Today we've got a three on three between Team A and Team B on Bastion of the Conclave. In the bottom section of the map, we have Team B, the Red Protoss player Grizzbomir. Grizzbomir? The Blue Protoss player Tiba. And the Blue Terran player, Atha. Lots of A's here. In the north, we've got Team A, the Purple Terran player, NHYC. The Orange Zerg player, Iowawadaba. And the Yellow Protoss player, Garethak. All right, so we're going to have... Is this actually all races represented on each team? Oh, no, no, no. There's not a Terran for... For, um... There's not a Zerg, rather, for Team B. That's what it is. Not a Zerg for Team B, but Team A has everybody represented. By golly, quick expansion on this right gold space by Wadaba here. Pretty good stuff. The 3v3 mid-rank madness level is something I'm very familiar with. I've played a lot of 3v3 in my day at this level of StarCraft, about Diamond. And uh, it's a rush fest a lot of the time. Um, a lot of the time, somebody will rush for carriers while the other two teammates try to defend and keep them from dying. And then the carrier group is kind of hard to deal with at our level because <laughs> it requires a lot of teamwork. Anyway, that's the problem with the team games in general, is that it requires teamwork. You can't attack by yourself. You can't defend by yourself, right? If two people show up to kill you and your other teammates are off doing something else, you're going to die. So it's a live together, die together kind of a thing. Garethak has a forward pylon. Is he cannon rushing? He's making a forge. It's after gateway, so it's not a cannon rush necessarily. But he is going to put some cannons down along this right side. Maybe going to try to knock down this rock formation to allow easier access to this expansion that Atha is working on. For Team B, SCV Scout for NHYC is gotten rid of. Everybody doing some good worker scouting. I think everything's been scouted to this point from both teams. Yeah, definitely. Well, actually, no. Team A scouting has not been that great. All they've ended up seeing is this expansion nexus from Grizzbomir. But I guess they're going to be the aggressors, so maybe scouting isn't as important. That's generally how that works. If you've got a crazy cheese build, you don't have to scout as much, right? Unless you're getting cheesed as well. I mean, I, I do like I do like scouting regardless of the situation. But if you have a plan, and it means you're going to do stuff real, real fast, you might be okay without doing it. There's a Reaper running around for Atha right now. Are we going to name the Reaper? I don't know. It's too crazy. It, the reason I name Reapers is because there's nothing much really else going on in the early game. But are you seriously just hanging out? And also, this guy's not doing anything. Go up to this main base of Wadaba and murder people. Murder things. What are you doing? You are from Team B, right? Yes, you are from Team B. And now you're going home. What <laughs> is happening here? I guess that's what Midrick Madness is all about. Finding little ways that people uh, get confused. All right, so Reaper's going to try to get rid of one of these drones. Stalker. Oh, might get him. Nope, Stalker. Though it does get a drone kill, but the Stalker going to murder him as well. Uh, two drone kills? Not bad. Not bad. The drones are fighting instead of running away, turning themselves into spore crawlers, which is... A bit of an issue here. So we're setting up. We're setting up for a pretty solid uh, mid-game type action here. It seems like everybody has an expansion except for this guy, NHYC. Gotta expand, dude. You're going for a crazy all-in attack of some kind. It sure seems like it. So many barracks. Already, let's see, fourth one under construction right now. Already has the three, obviously. Is that a shield battery? That is a shield battery. I'm getting better at recognizing the warp in size of the shield batteries. Has not been, been easy, but I have figured it out. All right, so Zealots from Team B are heading up north. Oh, they're going to find Wadaba's base as well. Oh, no. That is really bad. That is really bad for this expansion. Get out of there. Wadaba decides it's time to retreat. There are too many units here. Going to leave the hatchery to die. All the drones running for their lives. Queen actually trudging her way to hopeful safety as well. And actually, Garethak is not... Knocking down these rocks at all. He's instead got a shield battery. He's got gateways. He's getting more shield batteries. He's going to try to set up a way to attack this base and have a fallback position as well. That's what it looks like. So now down to two bases, unfortunately, is Wadaba. But that's better than having one, I suppose. Tossing up some spine crawlers. If attack comes up this way, they're going to have to deal with some static defense at the very least. But Team B looks like it's going home. Have you seriously not scouted this yet? Oh, scouted it. Tiba. Tiba scouted Garethak's secret base in the bottom right hand corner. Dude, get, get in there. Rawr. No, not happening. Not actually happening. Yeah, 
yeah, here come the Protoss players. No, you might have a couple cannons. Oh, the shield battery. The shield battery is healing these cannons, as it does automatically. You can manually tell it to heal other stuff, like pylons and gateways, but it will heal units and cannons by default on autocast. Right here, this autocast. Grisbomir and his friend Tiba heading up north, but guess who has a lot of marines and a couple marauders? NHYC! I don't know about this, though, so Micro's gonna have to be done here. Zealots right on top of marines is not good, though. The Ling's coming from the top side, too. Trying to make it so nobody can run, actually preventing the escape. So the Marines and the Marauders get in here to assist and absolutely picking off that that immortal die because of those lings. Made it happen. That was amazing stuff right there. So now the cannons are getting rid of these rocks. Up oh, tank setup from Atha on defense though. Gonna get rid of these cannons from a distance. Excellent job, Mr. Tank Commander. But guess who's here? Everybody else from Team A. The lings just get massacred. Were they even A moving? I don't know if they were. The Zealots focusing down this tank. They've got charge. It was easy to do in that situation and actually forcing a retreat here from our blue Terran player from Team B. Once again, dropping here with some Marines, with some tanks, getting absolutely obliterated, though. Unfortunately, your SCB is trying to run for their lives. Not actually happening for a lot of them, but some of them do manage to get out. Speedlings inside your main mineral line, Atha. That's a bad thing to see. It's a really bad thing to see here. Is there anything that can save this? No, that is just an SCV massacre. The armies for Tiba trying to do stuff up north. Coming up the ramp, though. Oh, but some Ling support for the Marines and the Marauders. That's how Lings are at their best. If they can draw fire from stuff that's actually doing a ton of damage, that's how you want to do it if you're the Ling player in this particular situation. SCV is still going to work here for Atha. Tank pops out for Atha, gets murdered as well. This is act looking like a pretty darn near solid attack from Team A from the north. Atha appears to be completely dead right now. I just don't know what's in production. Grisbomir working on a Dark Shrine. The one behind Dark Shrine adage proves to be true once again. There's a few adepts here from Tiba. Doesn't even have resonating glaives though. Can't see what's going on. Orbital Command in the way. There we go. And doing okay, but just too many Zealots, Marines, Marauders for this to really work out. Desperately, the Defender's Advantage is kind of kicking in here for Team B. They've got some units. Are they rallying? That was not great. <laughs> that was not a good thing to see. You're going to rally your units. Make sure you rally them somewhere where they're not going to be immediately attacked as they're doing stuff here. So the main base is gone from Atha. That is real bad news. Losing or Terran player for Team B. Meanwhile, Grisbomir, what are you working on, dude? You making stuff? Yeah, he's making Immortals and he's making Zealots, but the continual reinforcements coming. Just basically Zerglings from Garethak. No, that's Wadaba. Garethak is our Protoss player. Where's our Protoss player? I guess his stuff is going to join the party shortly. Some more Zealots. Checking to see if there a base in the bottom right-hand corner of Team B. There is not. The Wings are aware of that one. Attacking on into a couple cannons. These Marines and Marauders. we got plus one, plus one. And combat shield. On those Marines. Zergling trying to get involved as well. Hard to do, though. Oh, they're getting inside this mineral line. Oh, this is bad. This is really bad for Tiba. At the same time, Adepts getting trying to handle Marauders. Not exactly their forte. Wings just running around in circles. Not quite sure what to do with themselves. I guess if the probes are attacking them, it's easier for them to attack the probes. And, oh, Dark Templar's out. <gasps> A DT is finally out for Grisbomir. Is anybody recognizing this? The scan needs to come. The scan needs to come now. Three Dark Templar hacking away at your bio. Why are they dying, you may be asking yourself. Oh, the shield battery providing super great healing, too. Oh, the Dark Templar, though. Oh, just making it happen. More Zerglings. Yeah, this is this is me, basically. This is how I play Zerg in 3v3. There's so many Zerglings and they take up the Ultras. All right, so <laughs> Zerglings trying to kill probes. Just trying to keep Team P d uh, down on their worker count. Tiba is not mining at all at his main base, which is super bad news. But Grisbomir doing okay with it. Shield battery, heal up this immortal. He doesn't want to die. Is he going to die? Yes, he dies anyway. And the links are still alive. There are still three of them here. How is this even possible? Zealots for Garethak joining the party. Team A really wants to kill Tiba right now. And it looks like they're going to be able to. Plus one shields are done for Garethak. Surprisingly enough, you can't heal through five zealots hacking at you. I'm sorry. 
shield batteries are good. They're not that great. And again, the defensive Dark Templar. There's the scan. Okay, yes. Garethak says there are Dark Templar here. Scan, but it's too late. They're outnumbered four to two. And it could absolutely burn alive there. More Zerglings heading on down into this natural base of Grisbomir. Dark Templar are here to defend, though. So many Dark... A surprising number of Dark Templar are here to defend. As it turns out. <laughs> Oof. All right, so do we have a bit of a, a bit of a calm in the storm here? I feel like we do. I feel like it's a bit of the calm before things get entirely too crazy at this point in time. Where did this zealot come from? Oh, yeah, I forget that Garethak has all these gateways and pylons and stuff over on this right side. And is he, he's also trying to build another secondary base right here. At where the expansion of our uh, Blue Terran player used to be. Atha has expanded on this left side. He has a base working on a natural base too. So he has not given up. That is something you got to pay attention to. The Dark Temple are trying to do a counterattack. But there is so much detection right now. That was not a great idea. They did well for you defending. But once the opponent knew that they were there. They're going to have detection on the other side of the map. By the time you get there. I'm sorry Dark Templar. But yeah. Let, I mean learn from Atha. He died. He lost his natural. He lost his main. He believed in his teammates. He believed they could hold off the attack. He's expanding behind it. He's mining behind it. He's going to be a benefit to the rest of the game. And keep in mind, for op your opponents to be able to throw that much low-level stuff at you, they had to sacrifice some economy to make it happen as well. Now, Tebow lost a bunch of uh, probes. And the probe count is actually 48, 11, and 16 for Team B, whereas Team A is sitting on 22, 37, and 34. So definitely has the advantage there. Does Team A... But it doesn't necessarily mean they can just flood you with stuff at this point. Marines, Marauders, Mutalists getting made here by Wadaba. They did reveal themselves in trying to kill the Dark Templar, so I imagine we should see some Stalker production. Also, a lot of Marine production here. Yes, there we go. Atha making Marines, recognizing that is the best thing I can contribute right now. And thank goodness it's a Tier 1 thing. But if you want to get rid of Mutalists, Marines are not a bad choice. Definitely not. Mutalists from Wadaba, possibly trying to do some stuff. Again, the thing with Mutalists is that you really can't leave them alone. That's not really how that works. They need to be able to be on the move. They're checking for proxies. They're checking for other stuff here. And actually coming to break out of this is Team B. The Dark Temple. Oh, wait. Are those Dark Templar? Who DTs are these? Yeah, they're Grizzes. They're Grizzes, Dark Templar. But there's cannons down here, too. So the protection is amazing. But it's a really big combined Protoss army from Grizz and Tibba that are actually going to get rid of Garethak's very special proxy base, well, proxy setup warpin location here. So one's down. The Mutalisks, oh no, Atha. Oh, I've had days like this before. Atha just getting absolutely pooped on in this game. Gonna lose his main base, gonna lose most all of his SCVs, except for one who is somehow still alive. And never mind, the Mutalisks found him too. Yeah, Atha, how much? You got one. You have one SCV remaining. I don't know where it is. Maybe I'll try to find it later. Wow. Mutalisks trying to attack on here into Grizzbomir's base. There are a bunch of cannons, but not so much on the backside of the base, which means you're in trouble. Uh, NHYC retreating from these Dark Temple. <laughs> uh, there's an Overseer here now, though. And now pushing back on in with these plus one, plus one Marines. And Marauders. Mutalisks flying around, trying to kill more stuff. Yeah, I mean, Wadaba's responsible for a lot of probe death in this game. A lot of worker death in general in this game. I wish I had the number so I could see, but... Yeah, Mutas are great. Poor Phoenix. Phoenix are good unless they stand still. They have to be moving as well. It's kind of the same principle. Oh, but getting healed, they have shield battery. No, but not with Marines and Marauders on the ground. The purple NHYC player is here to assist Team A in this battle. Dark Templar again on top of it. Trying to make this thing happen with the DTs is Grizzbomir. Finally the scan, but it's too late. Again, the scan needs to come when you have enough units to kill the Dark Templar when you can see them. That's exactly how that works. But if you scan after most of your army is dead or run away, it's not as useful. Oh, look, there are Dark Templar here. Yeah, we knew. We knew that already. Mutaflox getting a little bit scary. There are 34 Mutalisks uh, in the sky right now. They don't have any upgrades. There are none on the way. But they should be able to do a ton of damage. It's kind of attack from the Protoss players. The teammates Dark Templar, Stalker, Immortal, Zealot. With plus two, plus two done. For Tiba, whereas Grizz... Actually, that was uh, Grizzbomir. Plus one, plus one for Tiba. Actually killing some bases here. Wadaba might lose a bunch of stuff. 
The Mutas need to come home and defend is what they got to do. Getting rid of the Dark Shrine, though, in the south, killing a bunch more probes, and I think it's time to maybe go help your friends. Uh, like they're dying to all of this stuff, dude. <laughs> Is he base racing? He's killing pylons and depowering stuff. He got some circlings in here too. These mutas might just be able to win it on their own in the base race situation. Oh, are they gonna force Team B to pull back rather than the other way around? No, no. Team B says we are committed. We are committed to doing this thing. On one base in mind out is Wadaba. So he's not gonna be making anything anytime soon here. The mutas just continuing to just murder everything. There's nothing opposing them here. There are no cannons. There are no stalkers. There are no marines. Okay, there's a couple cannons, three cannons. Here in this main mineral line for Tiba, but the Muta flock is so big it doesn't matter. 31 Mutas. Good golly, just obliterating that static defense. Dark Templar still doing stuff. 15 kills on that DT. 18 kills on that DT. In the production facilities of NHWC, and that's a good game out of Garethak. Garethak decides he's out. What are you doing, dude? I guess he's out of things. Is he out of things? He's got unadept. Yeah, it might be. Might be that he's out of things. But I don't know. This army this, this army from Team B is doing okay for itself right now. It's just, I think if the Mutas come home at all, it's the end of the story. Mm. Oh, special thanks to Dawn for screening all of the Midoric Madness replays for this week. Fantastic job finding a good one for me. I appreciate it. If you want your Midoric Madness game to be cast, send it to Falcon Paladin at gmail.com with the subject of Midoric Madness. I'll get them screened. The best ones will be chosen, and they will be exciting and fun like this. What's some mistakes we can point out? as well uh, alright I mean this is I, I don't know I kind of feel like it's a base race but I feel like it's not a base race as well man this Dark Templar 20 kills on this dude it's just that Gareth uh, I don't know Garethak I don't know man I just can't shake the feeling these mutas come home and this army's wiped out and that's your good game right I don't know. The Mutas aren't quite sure what to do. Wadaba, who's doing so much work, might just be removed from the game, although he is a re-expanding to the right side at this gold base, which is good news for him. Garethak's base is gone, but he does have a base in the top right-hand corner, and NHYC's got a couple bases along this left side, too, that are being used to a very, very good extent here. Grisbo, Mirror's natural base, is going to die. Just killing Nexuses, basically, is what these Mutalisks are trying to do. Bum, 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 bum. Is there any defense here for Garethak, or is it all just gateways? Uh, I guess there's a couple cannons coming up, and I don't know if it's going to be enough. This army from Team B keeps shrinking. Actually, no. Grisbomir still has a ton of stuff right now. <sighs> Do you just want a base race? A 3v3 base race is crazy hectic. You got six people running around trying to build stuff, trying to kill stuff, trying to hide things from everybody else. Reinforcing units are here. And all right, the Mutas, I think they're going to start to engage right about now. They are trying to pick off some of these units, but again, the upgrades are good for the Sockers. No upgrades for the Mutas whatsoever. The Sockers have plus two, plus two. The Phoenix have no upgrades, unfortunately for them. A few Marines getting killed from the sky. Grismomir heading along this left side. Is this an island expansion? By golly, it is. This is an island expansion on this left side. And Tiba... Is it? It is. Why? Well, I guess that's what this is, too, for Team B. Hmm. This gives the Mutas a distinct advantage, is what I gotta say. So he's saving his own hatchery. Saving it alive. But, man, I just really feel like in a straight-up engagement, you gotta get something done. This game is still going on. I thought it was over. I thought it was over. But sometimes it proves that I am totally wrong about a lot of things. Mutalists. Just killing robotics facilities, killing gateways, killing forges. Why not? Murdering stuff is what we are good at. Ping, 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 ping. Who is pinging so hard right now? Somebody is pinging really hard about something. I don't know what it is. More gateways. Just getting massacred here, too. I mean, this is Mutas are just base racing, whereas Grisbomir is turtling up. He's turtling up really hard, which I'm not sure is the right way to go. Making Phoenix, which is good. Again, you just have to have... Phoenix are very good against Mutas, but it does require some really great control. In a straight-up fight, they're not good. Their range and their speed and their extra damage versus light units is what makes them great against Mutas. But if you're just going to straight-up A move into Mutas with Phoenix, you're going to die. The trick is you don't, you don't let them hit you is how this works. So the Mutas are just not interested in doing anything but clearing out what buildings he knows exists. 
Some zealots from Garethak running around trying to rebuild. Up in this top right hand corner, he's got a robotics facility now, which means he can actually make stalkers and adepts and stuff. But the zealots are what we're looking at here. Ah, Tiba's. Ah, Tiba's going to be revealed. Tiba's going to be revealed right now. Yeah, I think the strategy here for Wadaba is just to kill all of the friends of Grizz, so then it's three to one, which is not a bad strategy, right? Just isolate one of the players if they don't want to assist their buddies, then it turns into a three versus one type scenario, and then they lose. Unless they're really good. I've actually been in situations where there's one player left in my 3v3s with the other team, and the dude wins because he's that great at StarCraft. Uh, maybe smurfing, perhaps? A little bit? I don't know. Tiba's being revealed here. I don't really know what Tiba's contributing right now. Tiba? Anything at all? Atha? No. Atha's not contributing. Tiba's not contributing. It's basically just Grizz. Just the Grizz. Dark Templar here from Grizz is going to get rid of Wadaba's final base. That's actually kind of interesting. There's still an extractor here that's Wadaba, so he's not going to be eliminated dead dead. But if he dies, that means his units need to be controlled by somebody else, and maybe somebody else isn't as good of a Mutalisk player. Did you think about that? Hmm. It's a possibility. Finally, this base of Gareth Axe in the bottom right-hand corner is getting cleaned up. It is a base that has been here since, I feel like, the beginning of the game. It's definitely been a while. But it is absolutely going to die. I mean, where is... Dude, I'm serious. Kill this final extractor. This Dark Templar. Going for it. Dude, are you... No, you weren't going for it, and then you stopped. Go get it. Garethak has a detection, though. He has an observer. That's problematic. Zealots trying to get rid of Grizzbomir all by themselves, but there are so many cannons here. Eight of them. A bunch along the backside. The numbers are big. All right, so we've got everything contained. Atha no longer has any forces. He's gone. And we just have the really big stronghold for Garethak in the top right. And a really big stronghold for NHYC in the top left. And a really big stronghold for Grisbomir as well. But the biggest army is going to be... Yeah, 61 army supply here for Wadaba. 55 for Garethak and 59 for NHYC. And 96 for Grizz. Never mind. 96 for Grizz is the biggest total supply here. Is that total supply? Is that... It might be total supply rather than his army supply because this, this Mutaflock's pretty big. But Stalker Phoenix. All right, here it is. Kite, kite. What did I just say about standing in there? Wadaba's rebuilding his own base somehow. How did he enough money to rebuild his own base? I really can't tell you. Cannot tell you how that worked. <laughs> Goodbye, Phoenix. Yeah, poor thing. Yeah, absolutely. Just very sad thing. Grisbomir expanding north of his stronghold, which is very dangerous because it is completely undefended right now. Yeah, he's got pylons. He's probably planning on throwing up some cannons, but doesn't have them yet, as it turns out. And yeah, right now it's two against one. We've completely removed the colors of the other players. This natural base, this new natural base of Grizz is going to die. The Mutas have found it. The Nexus is going to fall. Are the Phoenix going to try to engage it, uh, try to force an engagement here? The Stalker's blinking forward, picking off a couple of them. It's just, are the Mutas going to go for a straight-up attack right now? Ugh, thinking about it, deciding better. Thinking better of it. Single Phoenix overextending does die. Yeah, again, it just requires a lot of clicking. A lot of clicking. They can fire while moving, so that's nice. Just click out of range. Kind of click like this around circles. Half circles around the Mutas, and they may very well end up dead. Zealots from Garethak coming up to get rid of Grizzbomir. And I mean, if Grizz can't get this natural base down, he's just dead. He's starting to get mined out. And by starting, he's under a thousand minerals on each of these mineral patches. Only four of them remaining. Zealots continuing to try to make stuff happen. <laughs> but they're just wandering into a terrible photon cannon situation where there are shield batteries healing the cannons. And the Zealots just get massacred. But guess what? That pulls the army away from this expansion of Bomiers. And he loses it. He loses his Nexus, which is really terrible for him. Making three battle cruisers at a time is NHYC. Because, hey, at this point, why not make BCs? Is what I always like to say. Can we speed this up a little bit? I don't know. I've heard a lot of complaints about speeding things up. People don't. Don't enjoy it all that much. We got to wrap this up, you guys. Come on. Come on. You can do this thing. Wadaba. What do you need for these cannons? Tempest, maybe? Tanks would be pretty good, too. Just a whole bunch of tanks would be fantastic. But because a bunch of battle cruisers with plus one attack, not bad either, I suppose. 
Although Stalkers are really good against BCs. That bonus damage versus armored. 25 damage per shot versus armored. Weapon speed 1.54 is going to be coming real handy against these dudes. Plus two attack being researched. Garethat getting a Twilight Council. Perhaps tired of throwing only Zealots at the army. He's going to do other stuff. All right, if you're just going to sit here and no one's going to move, we're going to speed it up a tiny bit. Somebody make a move. Somebody make a move. All right, the Muta's flying around. Oh, I think they're just checking for additional bases. They're not doing anything. Do, 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 do. No bases down here. There is a base here, though. Chris Bomir has retaken his little new natural. Do they know about the bases? Oh, they don't know about the bases up here. Oh, that's a problem. That's a massive problem. Team B doesn't know about NHYC's bases. Mm. That's terrible news. Zealots from the front, stalkers from the back. But no, Muta's abandoning the position. Zealots by themselves here. They do take down a cannon. They got plus two armor, which is good. Or plus two shields, rather, which is okay. But once again, not quite able to pull this thing off. Immortals crushing through him, too. Muta's flying back on in, trying to kill more of these. But guess who's here? Blink stalkers. The Blink Stalkers doing what they can. Oh, now we can see. Now they can see. And the Battle Cruisers have arrived. The Mutalisk Battle Cruiser fleet on top of the Stalkers. Not looking good at all for Grizz. Is this going to be the final blow? And it is. Grizz with the good game. Ath is out too. Garethak tosses out the good game from his side of things. And that's going to be Wadaba. Garethak. <laughs> N -N -H or NYHC that are your victors today. Woo! Really fun 3v3. Fantastic stuff. Highly, highly enjoyable. Resources lost here. Definitely the most for Grizz. 26,000 resources lost. Garethak 22 and Wadaba 21 as well. Everybody else in the teens. But pretty good teamwork. And again, that's what it came down to. The Battlecruisers and the Mutas together. Able to get rid of Grizz, whereas one um, by themselves, probably not enough. Good strategies, good teamwork. That turned, that was pretty intense. And that's going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.
Yeah. 